Morning. Morning. I'm making, you know the bread I made yesterday? Very nice it was too. Yeah, so it's not a focaccia because it's, well it isn't. Um, I just kind of thought I'd make a tray bake bread. And that's the only way to describe it. So I had a tray and I had some bread, some mozzarella, and we wanted just to have a little nibbly thing. Um, it's quite a big nibbly thing. Um, but we wanted to have a bit of that before a barbecue. So it's just something there to sort of, it's like a tear and share bread really to sit on the table. And um, I popped it up on Insta and everyone really loved it and they still please make it. So here I am making it again. <laughs> It's still going to have double. Um, it's so simple to do. Now, I'm not a baker. I'm not a baker, but I, I've learnt a lot from Mr. Bertone. He's helped me. Um, but this is this is my sort of very basic white bread dough, okay, which is the start of this tray bake. It's really simple. And I do do it all in here, in this. You can knead it and everything, but it gets done in here. So I've got 500 grams of strong white bread flour in here. A good teaspoon of sea salt that's gone in as well I'm going to measure out here seven grams of yeast keep it away from the salt um, there we are seven on the nose a good slug of really lovely olive oil we get a lot more olive oil going into this a little bit later but I put a slug in here and then 360 mils or grams of water okay that goes in so I'm going to measure it Really? So mils and really? grams weigh the same, do they? About the same, yes. That's how it's just it's easier. It's easy to do it because sometimes on those jugs it can be between 100 and 200 mils, and you've got to kind of guess 150 or 175. This way, you're a lot more accurate. And you want to be fairly accurate for this. So this is 360 mils of water that goes in. 360 grams. Now, first of all, I'm just going to put it on slowly and I'm going to let it just get all the flour and the water and the oil and everything all mixing together. And then I'm going to turn it up and I'm going to give it a good knead for about 8 to 10 minutes. And that just strengthens the dough, works on the gluten, the elasticity, and it'll make it less sticky and then it's ready to have its little rest for about an hour until it doubles in size, but it's somewhere constant temperature, not too hot, just warm. Our boiler cupboard's brilliant for it. Oh, that's better, isn't it? It's quite loud. Um, so done, okay? So my dough is lovely and sticky. It's tacky, okay? So it comes away off my hands. This, again, this is stuff I've learned just recently from watching a certain chap do his demonstrations online. Um, so I've changed a lot of the way I've made bread, actually, just just by looking at that the way i was taught and the way i've been doing it for years anyway so this is tacky okay not too sticky and this is how you want it means it's all nice and strong i don't have a plastic dough scraper i did we moved here i have no idea where it went i've got my metal one still but i don't have my and can you get one for love or money can you get anything to do with cooking for love or money online at the moment everyone has um rediscovered i think their dough making instincts <laughs> during this this lockdown it's amazing right you don't want to add any to, to any more flour to this okay so you've got the right amount of flour and you've got the right amount of liquid in there um so don't be tempted to think oh this is really sticky i've got to add loads of flour don't okay you don't need to a little bit of flour on the surface and we're just going to scrape this together stuck in hands it's fine and I'm just going to gently just sort of form this into a nice little ball by taking one over like that one down like that one down like that and that side over like that it's so got all the folds underneath and I'm just going to put that back into this bowl a little bit of flour and just leave it in there cover it in a tea towel and I'm going to leave it for about 45 minutes to an hour, okay? It should double in size, size, somewhere warm, and I'll see you in a moment. So it's doubled in size. Oh, it's so soft and warm. I love this bit. I love just taking it out now. So I'm just going to, if I had, again, if I had a dough scraper, I could use that. I'm just going to just take it out with my fingers, and you can see how the yeast has been working in there. So 
turn it out onto the lightly floured surface. I love the feel of it, it's fabulous. And do you know what? I have got a vague dose for April. Where's it gone? And there. It's not brilliant, but it'll do the job. Just to get, I don't want to waste any of it as much as I can out. The helicopter's doing air stuff again today, John. Can you hear them? I can hear. Beautiful weather though. It's going to get really hot this week, isn't it? The week, as the week gathers on, hotter and hotter. You can get shorts on again. I might do. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you like when I get my shorts on. <laughs> there are children watching, John. Yourself. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, dear. Joe, if anyone's wondering, is my um, godson's brother, and I've known him since I was three. And apparently, he can watch this, but then if you and I get flirty, he finds it far too uncomfortable and he has to switch off. Bless him. He is 20 something, you should really know. Okay, so here it is on the surface. So, what I'm just going to do. So we're going to take the top to the bottom, okay? Just give it a little turn. I'm being very gentle with it, all right? And then again like that, and again like that. So it's all four corners, and then this one, okay? And then I'm just going to turn it over on the surface. Just leave it for a second while I oil my baking sheet, okay? So I'm going to give it a good oil underneath. Not too much, but I do love that oil that just sits underneath the bread dough. So I'm going to just put this, it also stops it sticking. And you can use flour. This is supposed to be non-stick, but I think it's probably been cleaned so much over the years and used so, it's probably lost a little bit of its non-stick goodness. So do, do that, and the other ingredients I've got is mozzarella, okay? sea salt, more olive oil, a little bit of rosemary and then I'm also today I'm going to put some of these on. These are these lovely tomatoes from the Isle of Wight, uh, the tomato store. It's a company down there that they, they're doing mail order of these amazing heritage tomatoes. Oh, except for that, that's a line left over from my, might have been my rum and coke. If I had. Hmm? Okay, so Bring the little baby dough here and very gently take your time to do it. There's no rush. Just press it and spread it out. It'll stretch to fit your baking tin. Okay. You can see all those lovely bubbles there that the yeast has made. You don't want to get rid of too many of them. So just as I said, be gentle. It will get there in the end. There we go. Can you see all those lovely bubbles? It's just gonna, this bread's going to be so light and airy and fluffy. So the idea is it's quite soft inside and then I'm going to do a little bit of olive oil on top as well. And I'm going to put it in the oven, but I shove a couple of ice cubes in there and that just helps to give it a little bit of a crust. It just makes a nice steamy atmosphere. Um, Not on top to of cooking. it. In a tray below. <laughs> just shove them in. Yeah. Just shove them in the bottom. <clears> the steam comes up. Right, so make some little dimples a bit like focaccia, which you do all those fingerprints with. And that just, it basically gives lovely little pools of oil within it. Um, and I'm going to just dot these colorful tomatoes all over, like that. Green amongst the red, yellow, Looks so pretty. Our tomatoes are coming on a treat in the garden, aren't they? This mm. weather is amazing. It's, everything is just looking so fabulous. There we go. All right, so they go on. And then I'm going to put some little sprigs of rosemary as well. Just dot those amongst it. Just add a lovely flavor. It's a really simple bread, this. So we cut it yesterday, didn't we, into sort of one little one like that. Um, and I think we got eight portions out of this. But make them smaller and we'll just rip up rip up the bread, put it in the centre of the table and just let people rip it apart. It is a bit of a tear and share. Um, it's all about just breaking a large 
chunk of it off when it's still slightly warm and um, scuffing it enormously, which is what we did, isn't it? We did. Enormously. We even had some later. We had some for breakfast this morning. You had a little bit of poached egg on top, didn't you? Very scrummy. All right, so that goes on. Now, lots of salt, okay? I love, I mean, not like mad amounts of salt, but it's so lovely to come across a salt grain in this when you bite into it. So be generous. Here we go. And next, mozzarella, big. Oh, now this is still slightly frozen in the middle because I, I whipped one out of the freezer today. It freezes brilliantly actually. So um, it's still a bit hard in the middle, but I shall just peel it apart and it should be fine. If you see me fighting with that last middle bit, that's why. So dot that all over. Make sure everybody gets a portion of the mozzarella when they bite into it, or there's a bit war. on the evenly. Oh, so good this bread. I've been making something similar to this for years. You know, there's a good thing about this lockdown is it just gives you time to have a little play with recipes and try something a bit different. Um, and I've certainly been doing that. I mean, I've been doing lots of different things. And I think actually, as my daughter Daisy said to me, I think I've been cooking more recently than I have done in years. Just because I've been able to, I've had the, the time and the, you know, to indulge in it. And also you get very creative, don't you, when you have less ingredients and you can't just pop to the shop. You have to make do with what you've got in the house. And I think it's all, I think we're all just finding a bit of joy again, aren't we, in the kitchen. Right, loads of olive oil. Loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads. Like that. Now I'm just going to leave this for 10 minutes. Okay, because I just want that bread to puff up again a little bit. Just have another little prune. It's about 10, 15 minutes. I'll have a little look at it. And just to be slightly higher, then I'm going to pop it into the oven. You see all the little bubbles, look. Little bu oh, I just popped it. No, I haven't. Little bubbles just there. All the yeast doing its wonderful stuff. And you see how much more spongy it is now? So it has grown a little bit. This is going into the oven, which has been on 220, okay? It's preheated at 220. I'm going to shove it in really quickly. And then we pop these two ice cubes at the bottom, shut the door. 10 minutes at 220, then I'm going to turn it down to 200, um, probably for about 15, 20 minutes. I'll have a little look-see and see what it's like. It might need a little bit less, a little bit more, but we'll start off 10 minutes at 220. Oh, I'm so pleased with this. See, I think this is better than yesterday's. Look at that. If you take it, you have to loosen it with um, a fish slice underneath it, just to make sure it comes off okay. Um, so now I think it's just a case of uh, cutting the little beauty. And there, cut here. Oh, it's still very hot, but I'm gonna go in there. I'm going in. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see? Mm -hmm. Mozzarella, stringy, lovely. Mm, wonderful. Listen, I think you should make this. It took about half an hour in the oven. I did 10 minutes at 220, about 15, 20 at 200, and then just a few minutes with the door open to give it a really nice crust for the last few minutes. And honestly, it's worth it because it's completely scrumptious. And, mm, Oops. I think you should eat it and I think you should make it.